everyone, welcome back to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne and today I'll be covering this Corsair Gaming M65 RGB mouse. It's available in black or black and white and hopefully they'll bring the camo color back because it's just more variety for all of you. And this is definitely geared towards FPS gamers. Here's what comes in the box. The mouse itself, which I'll go over in more detail in just a bit, but does come with braided cable as well as a USB 2.0 connector. And you get 1.8 meters or 5.9 feet of braided cable. Now let's move on to the documentation. You get a user guide, of course, and it tells you what the buttons are on default, but of course they are all programmable. And you also get a warranty guide. As for dimensions, this mouse measures 118 millimeters or 4.6 inches long, 72 millimeters or 2.8 inches wide, and 39 millimeters or 1.5 inches deep. And you get this smooth, soft touch finish all along the front, and the Corsair Gaming logo as well as the DPI indicator and the track wheel section will light up. And also, let's remove this and take a look at the sides. You get a rougher finish on the sides, feels a little bit like sandpaper, and this is definitely for grip, especially if you're playing for long hours and you, your hand tends to sweat a lot, like mine does when it gets too hot. <laughs> Alrighty, um, and I would also say that this mouse is for medium to small hands because I have tiny hands and I feel like it's comfortable enough where I can reach the track wheel easily with my index finger and I don't have to reach, uh, and my forefinger has a nice rest on the edge. Now on to the buttons. There are eight programmable buttons, but you always have to have a left click. So you have to program another button to have the left click in order to reprogram this button right here. So on default, this is your sniper button. Just hold the button down to access the sniper button's low DPI setting. And here's your forward button and your back button. Now let's turn it around to the front. So on the front, of course, you get your left and right clicks. And these are, I'd say, light to medium resistant for the clicks because I definitely had heavier resistance before, harder to press. And the switches are Omron and rated for 20 million clicks. Now as to the track wheel, it is huge, which is much more comfortable in my opinion to use. Um, and it's got this concave shape that contours to your finger as well as it's a uh, rubberized texture. Now below that you have your DPI up and DPI down buttons and once again the center is the RGB DPI indicator. Here's a closer look at the bottom of the mouse and it comes with this aluminum unibody frame. This is for extra durability and it's also a good distribution of weight across the board. So the mouse feels very balanced. And also you get some gliding feet all around and I love how they designed it so it looks like a sad sad robot. <laughs> Alrighty, um, and also in addition to that, of course, you get weights. That's what I really, really like about this mouse is that it gives you that option. So you get three screws and three weights, and total with the screws is 20.5 grams, but the weights are four and a half grams each. And the mouse weighs 115 grams without the weights and 135.5 gram with the weights. So you just use a coin to remove the weights. Joe let me a dime so I can go ahead and remove these weights for you so I can show you what it looks like. One moment. Now that the screws are off, this robot looks like a surprised C3PL. Uh, it even looks like it's crying. But anyway, let's go ahead and take out the weights. So this is what the weights look like. And once the weights are out, it is definitely lighter, but because of the aluminum frame, you still get a little bit of heft to it. Now it just looks creepy. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, having a little bit too much fun here. One last thing is the laser sensor. So over here is the 8200 DPI, yes, 8200 laser sensor, and uh, laser sensors can be read more accurately on more types of surfaces versus optical, and they can reach higher acceleration rates, and you also get more DPI with laser. Here's an LED demo of the mouse. It comes with three zone lighting, like I said again, logo, DPI indicator, as well as the track wheel, but I'll have to turn it around to show you the track wheel lighting. So right here, let's go over the DPI indicator first. Right now it's on the lowest setting. Well, this is on default, you can change up the colors for sure. And then you'll know exactly which DPI you're on by the color, which is nice. So there we have it, but let's tune it down to the middle. Now on the bottom, I have set this zone of lighting to be gradient. So you'll notice the colors are fading in and out to the colors that I picked, of course. 
And also, let me go ahead and set it on the bottom here. This is so you can see that not only does the logo light up, but in this ventilated area down here, there's a little bit of underglow, kind of like car blue lights. I mean, that's how I would compare it anyway. And then now let's flip it over to the scroll wheel. So I also set this to shine as gradient. So there you go. So you see the colors changing. Very, very nice. Alrighty, now then I also set a couple modes to this profile. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle through it so you can see what different colors look like on this. So let's go ahead and go to JTL colors. Not sure why this DPI indicator always changes every time I shift to mode. I don't like that. Anyway, um, and JTL colors purple. And let's change it again to red and blue. Or I think that's blue, unless it's purple and I'm colorblind. That concludes this look of the mouse LEDs. Here's a quick look at the Corsair Utility Engine software for the M65 RGB mouse. What I like about the software is that it doesn't matter if you have a K70 or K65 or M65, they'll all show up using this one piece of software. Now then, let's start in settings. You can back up or recover. And for the device, you can disable device lighting altogether and change up the report rate, which is actually quite important for mice because it helps eliminate lag or reduce it the higher the hertz. Now then, you could also update firmware here and make sure it is updated. Now let's go to program. So in program, you can go ahead and play with your language settings, on-screen display if you want it or not, as well as uh, perhaps change up your media players. Now then, let's go to support. So in the support section, you could get the user manual, online support, if you don't understand something, but I'm here to try to teach you whatever I can. <laughs> and what's really cool is it also shows you your system information, which is really useful if you forgot and you wanna upgrade or update or something. And let's go to the lighting tab, actually. You can create new lighting effects here. So let's say you want solid gradient, ripple, wave, it doesn't matter, let's say we want ripple or something. Let's call it, Ripple 3 or something. And intensity, you want to add tabs so it'll change color, different colors whenever and however we want it to, like so. And then click on the individual tabs to be able to change up the colors. So if you were wondering how to create the rainbow effect, this is how you do it, step by step by step. And it's really fun because you get to personalize it completely how you want it to be. Now let's get the last one. I just kind of like to play around with all the colors and you might not think it works, but then it's like, that looks kind of cool, like a clown's outfit. All right, <laughs> and then you could change up the uh, tail, the, how fast it is, the duration, brightness, uh, whatnot, and you can just click okay to save it, but we're not going to. Now then let's go to actions. This is where you can create um, a macro, for example, call this uh, macro two or something. And you can change up the termination, repeat, the actions, uh, light, lighting when it starts, then record. Let's just call it macro two. And then stop record when it's done. And boom, it's been made. You can also make a text, keystroke, shortcut, uh, DPI, mouse, or uh, media control. Whatever you like to set to your mouse buttons. Now then, let's click out of here. You could also import and export actions um, if you have someone else's that you would really wanna try or something like that. Same thing with lighting. We are currently in the profiles tab and you could import or export profiles or create a new one, um, but we have enough. So we are just going to change this K70 RGB. Don't know why it's still that. And go ahead and edit profile. Gotta press the button. <laughs> and call this Joanne's M65 RGB. And once again, you can link profile to program. Click OK. And what you can do is you can save the profile to device memory, which I've already done. Now beneath the profile, you also get something called mode. So essentially it's profile exception. <laughs> Modes are kind of like profiles inside of a profile. So to create one, click the plus icon and let's call this M4. And you could also write notes in there. For example, this is for X character for X game, or this is for X program. And then click OK. 
and it has been created. However, this is set to profile switching, so we're gonna go ahead and reset to default, which is DPI up. And it's probably a good idea to keep these profile, I mean, DPI up and DPI down, just because it's just a good area to have them. And then let's go ahead and assign actions to buttons. So you've created actions, but you can also create a new action here. Okay, but not only can you do that, you can also open up your actions list. And let's say you want to assign banana to click three. I mean, middle click. Go click, okay, boom, banana. And then open up this sheet and then click the middle button. And there you have it, banana. <laughs> I love it. Okay, <laughs> anyway, um, and let's close it out. I mean, I do like how user-friendly it can be sometimes where you don't have to redo things. You could just easily find it. And then you could also, of course, reset default or clear, it doesn't matter, they're pretty much the same thing. So if you have a bunch of modes inside the profile and you want to be able to switch it up, so you just assign a button to mode switch right here. And then what I do is I switch to next mode, loop back and then press okay, or assign. And that should do the trick. And each one should have number five as mode switching. Now, if you want to do it for profile switching, for example, let's say you want to set this to profile, then you have to click switch and then loop back and then add all the profiles that you'd like to loop back to. And then you have to go to those profiles and assign this action to that profile. So that is a little bit you know, out of the way, but uh, if you want that, then go for it. But there aren't all that many buttons on here. So I think it would just be enough to have mode switch and just keep your DPI and then assign another uh, command to this button, for example, maybe uh, reload or something like that. Alrighty, um, now let's go on to performance. So this is where you can change up your DPI levels. You could slide the bar, circle on the bar, or you could change it up here with arrows, or you can directly type into it. And on default, I believe this is 400, set at the same level as the sniper DPI. And you could go ahead and uh, do independent XY, which is always helpful for those of you who actually utilize this. Um, you can reset it and uh, change your pointer, motion speed, uh, change your lift height distance, as well as angle snapping. If you enable it, it'll allow you to draw a straight line better. <laughs> and then let's go to lighting. In the lightings tab, you can go ahead and change up your colors. For example, let's say you want to make this background color green. And then you want to make the scroll wheel background color red. I'm not sure why Christmas is already passed. And to in order to change the DPI level profiles, just right click and edit light. And then you can go into it and independently change each one depending on the DPI that you, it corresponds with. So you can see the numbers here. And of course you could do the sniper indication, brightness level, other DPI indications and brightness. And then just click okay. And there's only solid lighting for this. There's no ripple or there's no wave and there's no gradient. What you can do with the logo LED and the scroll LED to add the lighting effects is go ahead and drag over them with your mouse and then create a new group. And let's call this group all. <clears throat> Great. And then what you do is you hit all, open up lighting effects, which I already have a lot of effects for. Once again, this is only gradient or solid. And I'm gonna add gradient two here. And then once you hit all, you can go ahead and edit the light and this is what it looks like. So they're both showing this. Now then, if you wanted something different, for example, let's say you want this to be gradient two and you want this to be gradient one, override the light settings, yes. This way you can have a different lighting effect for the scroll wheel and one for the logo. And then what I like to do with these effects is I don't like it to end. So start with the mode and don't end. And that way it'll just cycle through the colors that I have selected. Same thing with here, but some of you might want it to end after a while, but I don't. So I'm going to keep them both like so, so I can show you the lighting effects. So you can't assign ripple or wave to um, even if you create a group for all it just would not let, let you because, well, it didn't make sense because there aren't enough LEDs to actually create that effect. It's not like a keyboard. And so I think gradient is pretty cool. 
And that wraps up the software tutorial for the M65 RGB mouse. Hopefully you found it helpful and you can go ahead and start programming your new M65 RGB mouse. Let's take a look at the pros and cons. So what I like about this mouse, I like that it's RGB of course, and these days RGB is what's trending. And of course, it's a plus that the buttons are programmable. And I like the unibody aluminum frame because it adds to the rigidity of the construction. And the rougher sides for grip will help when using this mouse during long gaming sessions. The sniper button is positioned where my thumb naturally rests, so it's easy access. And a DPI indicator LED is always nice to have because I know some mice do not have it, especially if you're constantly changing it up. And the weight system is welcome for those who need a heavier mouse for one task and a lighter mouse for another, or just for different games. As to the cons, I would have liked to see a track wheel up and down programmability function. And I wish the track wheel LED was more noticeable from my point of view. It's more visible from the other end if someone were to walk by and go, hey, look at that track wheel LED. <laughs> and I find the placement of the cable to be in an odd place because I plug in my mouse from the right side into my PC and I feel like the cable wants to veer left. However, if you have a Corsair keyboard with a USB pass through, it might be less awkward. And I cannot add lighting effects to the DPI LED. Uh, however, I, I can change it up, but I guess it would be confusing that way. It's like fading from one color to the next. All right. And also you can only add solid and gradient effects to the logo and the wheel LEDs. But that makes sense as there aren't enough LEDs on there to make a ripple or wave effect. But maybe they could include more LED spots and then you could see it wave or ripple in the future. But that's it. That wraps up this look at the Corsair Gaming M65 RGB mouse. If you like what you saw and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons, as well as follow me on social media. Joanne Tech Lover Facebook fan page, Joanne Tech Lover again on Twitter, and Joanne Tech Lover one more time on Instagram. Also, please don't forget to hit the donate button so I can help expand this channel and feed this techie. One last thing is storeenv.com where you can go ahead and check out my 8.5 by 11 inch autograph prints that you can buy. I guess all that's left to say is bye!